I just crack on in? Yes. Crack the old egg. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, you're making egg jokes already. I am. <laughs> We're not even technically recording yet. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Talking Codswallop. I am Gemma. I'm James. And guess what, everybody? It's Happy Zombie Jesus Day! Oh, you're going to get struck down for that one. For all people <laughs> who are religious, I deeply apologise for my heathen, evil, soulless, red-headed co-host. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, I apologise. It's chocolate-eating day, isn't it? Oh, the hole gets deeper. Yeah, the, the scary thing, Salty Tadpoles, is before this started, she was already making egg jokes, you know, since she wanted to crack on with things. Yeah, the I did. The hell that I have to go through. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I absolutely did. And oh, Okay, well, if it's not that, then it must be rabbits laying eggs day. Is that right? That's so disturbing. I'll run with that one. <laughs> All right, fine. Happy Easter, everybody. Or Happy Easter. Can you say happy? I don't know. But anyway, happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> yes. If I ever see a, a, a rabbit, because they're in the field across from my house laying an egg, I will be truly terrified. Uh, no, you capture that footage on camera and you send it in to people. Literally, as we speak, speak the, the little blighters are sat in the field. No, oh. but yeah, if you were to capture that footage, that you can guarantee that that would be uh, quite high up viewed uh, <laughs> YouTube material, wouldn't it? <laughs> You'd yes. probably get a million downloads for that at least, or views or whatever it is for YouTube. <laughs> I shall have, I shall, indeed, I will have to work on my photoshopping abilities. But yeah, there's one of them bouncing around like mad in the field in front of me. Oh, oh that um, makes it perfect for Easter then. It does. And once we're finished recording, I'm going to get the shotgun. <laughs> you behave. <laughs> Elmer Fudd. <laughs> Wabbit stew. Yo, you leave those bunnies alone. <laughs> Their lives will be spared until they enter my garden, at which point things get more interesting for them. Yeah. <laughs> and isn't it funny how I've been so trained that, you know, I know it's a rabbit, but I'm I'm saying bunny because I know that I'm not supposed to say it over on Portland. So, you know, it's like, and I think I've told that story reason why for mm -hmm. a long time ago. But um, yeah, I think, do you remember the reason? God, no, please remind me. Because okay. we may have new listeners, so please remind us all. That's that's a very good point. So for those of you who remember, I'm ever so sorry, but James doesn't remember. And like, like James says, we may not have had, uh, may have new listeners, you never know. Um, so on the island of Portland, there is such a thing as um, not being able to say the word rabbit. You have to say bunny or, you know, floppy eared animal. I don't know, something along those lines. But um, the reason behind it is because years and years and years ago, um, there were miners in the well mines and they were digging and uh, because rabbits had been in the area they dug holes so unfortunately the um the mines actually caved in on the people who were actually working on them uh, so obviously it's it's from them point onwards it's been uh, classed as a bad omen um even down to the point that they have, uh, well, it's not really a functioning cinema anymore, but they did have a little cinema on Portland. And when the Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were-Rabbit came out, they would refuse to play it because of this tradition. So it's it's absolutely nuts. That's cutting off your nose to spite your own face, isn't it? Yes, destroy your own uh, financial ability because of a <laughs> and, uh, superstition. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, we're we're talking like, like, like probably yeah. at least fifty years ago. You know, maybe mm -hmm. more. It's probably more than that, actually. Thinking on it, so it's probably a hundred years ago. Let's say. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. Interesting on the rabbit front, on the fact them weakening the ground. It's one of the reasons why, like in the in the fields around uh, most areas, you will end up getting, you know, the, if the fields say have sheep or cattle in or whatever, the rabbits will probably end up getting shot or got rid of because the problem you get is with them creating, you know, them create warrens and whatnot. It weakens the ground, like you were saying, the same problem that the the uh, the miners had, mm. and you end up with cows and other animals 
basically breaking the legs and things because they, you know, obviously they can get caught where the lands collapse, where the, the the earth has collapsed. So yeah, that's why you have to have a bit of culling of them. Oh, so you took it to a horrible, sick place. I don't no, I know the idea. It, I took it to reality. <laughs> so you, you frowned upon me calling uh, Jesus zombie Jesus, but then you've just yes. talked about the culling of rabbits. How well, evil are you on our Easter episode? There is, it isn't these, cow episode, is no, it? <laughs> no, no. No, clearly, clearly I'm just a, an evil, twisted bastard. But that's what you get. This is what happens. Salty Tebbles, this is what happens when you've worked with Gemma for long enough. The evil <laughs> will seep into you. <laughs> it definitely does. And let's face it, we have to keep it real on this podcast as we well. Do. So those things do happen. So, yeah, and I do I do understand that. But, you know, still but it was quite if it, sad. If it makes people happy, especially the, 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 veg, the vegan and peta people, I don't like rabbit. <laughs> Peter, but yes. <laughs> peter, Peter, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Petter bread, Peter bread. Hey, hey. Uh, that's Peter. <laughs> I know this is how bad. Th- if Gemma's c- correcting my language, oh, we're in a dark place. <laughs> it's not your language; it's just your pronunciation of things. So, yes. oh, that reminds true. me. Actually, yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, you know, a few a few weeks back, I said to you, further, we were talking about further ado further to do yes yeah. yes i was wrong with what i corrected you with it was ah. actually further ado not right. to do so further ado right yeah yeah so i don't know why i think i was just getting so worked up <laughs> i was like hold on a minute when i listened back to it i was like that's not right <laughs> see the, again salty tubbles educational yep we are and we're not just entertainment we are an educational pro- podcast and we should probably be getting, we should find out we should get some kind of grant for this over an educational uh, listening program for people. Oh, I do like that idea. I do like that idea. Yeah. I like the idea of money, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, money makes the world go round. Yeah, but then to be fair, we don't do anything to actually try to get money. So, um, you know, like we we could sell T-shirts or we could sell, uh, mm. you know, merch and stuff like that. But yeah, we haven't we haven't sort of pulled our finger out to actually do that. So maybe maybe that's something we can focus on. <laughs> we could hopefully we'd be the outlay would uh we'd make enough money so we, we would actually make a profit we can oh, we'll only see. we can only hope we can only hope well there you go salty tadpoles you out there no not you the one behind you yeah, yeah you tell, <laughs> yeah. tell us how 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 interested you would be in buying branded product from us yes exactly yeah that would be uh, that would actually be quite useful. So maybe I'll put a couple of polls out or something like that if I remember. But we'll see. We'll see. It's a bit of a hectic time, as you all know. So we'll see what happens. Yes. You too could have a a uh, one of those uh, those anger toys that you crush with Gemma's face on it, Gemma's <laughs> looking rageful and full of anger. Do you know what you actually say that? It's actually quite funny because I did actually find, and I thought it was perfect on brand, but it was far too expensive, so I couldn't do it. But um, Lucy, again, Lucy Caton, she's always like the mastermind behind uh, the dodgy thing. Sorry, Lucy, but you are. Um, <laughs> she, uh, her friend had come into work with, um, it was kind of like a stress ball with the mm-hmm. company's logo on it. Mm-hmm. And, but... The um the stress ball was actually a sperm, so a tadpole. <laughs> so I yeah, because it was a local company, so it was like a Dorset company. So I reached out to them to find out how much it would be to like put our logo on there and maybe sell a few off kind of thing. But yeah, it was it was too much money for for us to fork out. But that would have been perfect, wouldn't it? A Dorset company creating slightly, you know sick sexual products not surprised at all <laughs> no but how how on brand would that have been though it that would, would have been, been very perfect. on brand yes it would yeah. have been very good yeah so i thought i really thought long and hard about it and then i was like i really can't do it it, it was like yeah it was ridiculous amount it was like i don't know Silly figures. Silly figures, yeah. So we'll just leave it at that. But yeah, because it's been a long time since I looked it up. But mm-hmm. oh, if that had been affordable, I definitely would have gone with that. 
<laughs> well, give give it time. There may be giant mutant sperm walking around soon with the oil spill you've got around there. So, you know. Yeah. Have we got an oil spill, have we? Change. Uh, I believe so. Wasn't there some sort of oil spill that was in the news? There'd been some sort of oil in the water. Hmm, I don't know. I don't really watch the news, do I? And I only, if I stumble upon things, I'm like, oh, okay, so that's what they're talking about. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. Don't know well, anything. it's worry, it's worrying when I know more about what's going on in the area you're in than you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but then at the same time, you watch the news. I don't. I uh, purposely don't. You know, I just think, well. There nothing nothing seems to be quite obvious around. So. Blissful ignorance. I'll he's, find out what's he's happening. Googling it. He's Googling it, I everyone. Am. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'll find out. Yep. There are major incident declared for an oil leak large onshore from a large onshore field in Dorset. Okay. Where? Pool Harbour. Pool ah. Harbour oil spill. That's probably why I don't know about it then, because I'm in Weymouth. Ah, well, you know. So close enough. Well, it is, it is, because I work in Pool, um, so yeah, so it's, they're about 45 minutes away, but yeah, so, but I wasn't familiar with it, as in I haven't seen anything about it, literally seen it with my own eyes, because I haven't mm. been to Pool for ages, so, but yeah, so that makes sense. That's your next mission, Gemma. Well, that's my next mission next week, isn't it? So let's, uh, mm. let's not talk about that yet. <laughs> You know, oh, don't depress me. We're trying to be upbeat. Anyway, without further ado. <laughs> oh, come on. He muted himself, everybody. He muted himself. He would have laughed. I'm sure he would have laughed. <laughs> yes, it would have been a, a throaty coughing slash laugh moment. Oh, well, there you go then. <laughs> so this is going to be a slightly shorter episode this week, um, even though we've revamped already, you know, we've vamped already. But um, yeah, we have found some, well, it's 20 fun Easter facts that you probably don't know. So yes. we're going to read through them and we're going to sort of like maybe discuss them if uh, if they deserve our discussion. And, we've been uh, told the fun. It's up to you, Tadpoles, uh, to decide if they actually are fun or not or whether we've been lied yeah. to by the creators of the article. Well, All will become clear. Exactly, exactly. So do you want me to take the first one or do you want to go first? I'll, ladies first. Okay. <clears throat> so number one. Easter baskets have special symbolism. Symbolism. <laughs> it sounded very funny mm. when I said that. <laughs> I apologise to any Welsh listeners. I apologise to any Indian listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you kind of swerved into two different areas of accent. Then. <laughs> I really did. I really did. Like I own it. Um, the woven treat containers represent birds' nests and new life especially when filled to the brim with eggs. Plus, they're pretty uh, good. Utilitarian. <laughs> Utilit <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was just going to go with the word good, but yeah, what James said. Utilit utilitarian, is that right? Oh. Utilitarian. Utilitarian, okay. They're a pretty utilit <laughs> utilitarian way to gather those goodies on your Easter hunt. I did say hunt. <laughs> yes. It's, thankfully, you were able to use the correct wording for that specific thing and not go into any foul territory that get us struck off. <laughs> no, um, absolutely. And and also, can I just point out that I was going to go with good instead of utili utilitarian because I knew I was going to stumble over the word, but then James came to the rescue. So, yeah. As ever. But you got there in the end. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. You got there in the end. There's no problem. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was going to say also, did you, when you were a kid, did you used to do like Easter egg hunts and stuff like that? Not that I remember. I actually don't, I mean, it's, it's a, a reach. I possibly might have done something in the woods uh, doing like an Easter egg hunt maybe once or twice, but I don't really remember it mm. um, being a thing. You? I, I didn't, but also for the same reason, uh, not for the same reason, but because I, when I was a kid, I had a lot of chocolate allergies. So mm -hmm. I've got fond memories though of, because my mum didn't want me to miss out. So she'd melt down like carob and stuff like that, you know, uh, you know, stuff that was like a replacement for chocolate, because in those mm -hmm. days there wasn't such a thing as allergies. So you really had to hunt high and low to get stuff. But she used to make, um, you know the the big eggs 
for me from mm-hmm. like a mold and uh, she'd like hand decorate them or um or I would get like a little um there was like little like sweets that I could have again mm-hmm. they were like missing all of the allergy kind of stuff but yeah she'd uh, she'd put them in a what was it it was almost like an advent calendar but it wasn't an advent calendar because it was obviously for Easter but uh yeah it had little pockets and stuff like that so I could um I could have some bits and pieces when I was a kid so uh, yeah so thank you mum if you're listening I do appreciate everything that you did when I was a kid and now <laughs> so Obviously, back in the dark ages, kids, things were not that easy. You know, no. for you know, now that everybody everywhere has allergies to everything, yeah, um, and things are being dealt with. But yeah, feel for Gemma back in the dark ages when things were not so simple. No, but seriously though, it was awful, James. It was, you know, like you don't have, you know, if you look at the back of a back of um, something now, and it sort mm-hmm. of like they highlight all of the stuff, you know, says yes. contains eggs or or whatever or peanuts um, or whatever yeah yeah which ironically peanut butter has got it contains peanuts but uh, we have it i anyway moving on <clears throat> i think that that one is off yes guys but um yeah they actually make it in like bold now and they've mm-hmm. got like the traffic light system so you know it's red amber or green you like you know for my diabetes side of things and but it was literally was none of that when I was a kid. It See, was... yeah, when when we were younger, we played Russian roulette with food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You exactly. wusses, and you're all like, "Oh, I can't have this. It might make me sick. I'll have to check the things." Nah, we didn't do that. We just we we spun that wheel. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. like we were constantly, you know, we were constantly basically at the casino spinning the wheel. Yeah, and would uh... it kill us? Would it not kill us? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and it was like I I um I permanently lived in like places like Holland and Barrett and stuff like that because that was the only place that actually did anything that you know it was obvious that it was like chocolate free or a number blah 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 or e number blah 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 and yeah. So anyway, that's a little Basically, sad story about my life. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, kids, you don't know how good you've got it. So, on to point two. There is a reason you probably eat ham for Easter dinner. This is a new one on me. So, historically, Mm, most early Easter celebrants would have eaten lamb for this special occasion, since the holiday sits roots in Jewish Passover. But, these days, many American Easter uh, dinners or diners now feature ham instead, because of the time of the holiday. Years ago, hams cured over the winter months have been ready to serve in the early spring. Mm. Yeah, so it, that maybe sounds a bit more of uh, an American, American thing. Tradition, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've never, I've e- never eaten ham on uh, Easter dinner, uh, or had an Easter dinner. I don't think. No, I don't recall doing that either. <laughs> no, it's whatever's in the fridge or the freezer. <laughs> Stick it on it. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so far, everybody, I just wanted to check in. Are these actually fun Easter facts or are our little bits in between actually more fun? There's the thing. Hard one to say. Yeah. (laughs) Finding out that I was a poor child. (laughs) Now, these are one of my favourite flowers. So this is actually quite nice. It's uh, been brought up. Easter lilies are a relatively new tradition. These beautiful blooms first originated in Japan and arrived in England in the late 18th century. The United States only caught onto the trend after World War I. The transition from dormant bulb to delicate flowers makes, uh, brings to mind hope and rebirth, two important themes for an Easter celebration. So, yeah, I really love it. I love lilies. Yeah, li- I do like lilies. The only problem is that if you get the pollen on you, it stains like anything. And yeah. they are more, to me, well, certainly my knowledge of them is they're more of a funeral flower. Mm, I suppose they could be, yeah. Um, not in our house, because we like them. But uh, 
But I also know that they're quite deadly to cats as well. So if you've got a cat out there and you like lilies, it's probably not a good idea to mix the two. But um, alternatively, if you hate cats, get your lilies. <laughs> but then why would you have cats if you hated them? <laughs> Don't know. The world's full of sick people. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> For And just to, to warn the salty tadpoles, if you ever see Gemma near a few, you know, near a roadside black spot and all the flowers have disappeared, <coughs> lilies. <laughs> I mean, that would be a bit heartless, wouldn't it? But, I mean, they are nice flowers, so who knows? <laughs> so, our next one. Easter eggs have medieval origins. Think Easter egg hunts are a strange tradition. You know, we kind of touched on this earlier. Yep. Listen to this medieval game chill. What? This medieval... Medi- who the hell wrote this article? Listen to this medieval game, children's game. A priest would give one of the choir boys a hard-boiled egg, and the boys would pass it amongst themselves until the clock struck midnight. God, I hope it wasn't. I hope it was late in the evening. And they went there in the morning. God, you will be passing this egg round from seven a.m. till midnight. Um, when whoever was holding got to eat it, we hope they at least got some salt and pepper to go with it. Okay. Well, I Fair mean. Enough. I, I, I'm going to take it to a new level here. Well, at least the priest only gave them a hardboard egg. Hey. <laughs> oh, man, we're going to get struck down again. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm thinking more that we'll get done by like some broadcasting commission. <laughs> oh, do you know what, James? I think we're small enough to go under the radar, so I think we'll be all right. Yes. But, you know, if if we do get put in the public eye for comments that, for the most part, I've made, that, um, you know, at least it's uh, at least it's a bit of press, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll be there going, I do not support or endorse these foul comments made by my co-host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, is this not you laughing, sir? Because I've edited no, it, it was, so you did no, laugh. <laughs> no, no, it was just me with a very bad cough. <laughs> no, but what you don't know, James, is that I've edited it, so it's, uh, you know. It is. You, you're smart. You'd be lifting it from other previous episodes where I was laughing most I heartily. I know. Or a few minutes ago when you started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so, number five. Easter clothes used to be considered good luck. Old mm. su- uh, superstition held that if you wore new clothes on Easter, you would have good luck for the rest of the year. Oh, I might actually buy some new clothes. Um, I think we've f- got to do it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's telling me I'd like some good luck. Um, in fact, it is so widely believed that upper class New Yorkers would literally, literally strut their stuff coming out of attending Easter, Easter what is wrong with my mouth Easter Mass um, at well-heeled midtown churches this tradition be- uh, became the basis of the modern and decidedly less elitist Easter Parade and Easter Bonnet Festival in New York. So this is obviously, I'm now realising that this is probably a uh, American um, yeah. advert, I, guys. Sorry. I had twigged very early on this was an American article, and I also like to point out it's not written correctly because good old Gemma managed to go with, it became, not the fact they've written as this tradition become. Yeah. <laughs> Learn to spell good housekeeping. Or maybe they wrote for dyslexic people who, um, you know, because I did, I did stumble over a couple of the words that were actually spelt correctly. But then <laughs> when it came to a word that was wrong, I was like, da da. <laughs> uh, interestingly, the next article ties back to something we mentioned earlier, which is Easter eggs date back way before Easter. Ooh. There's evidence showing that Easter eggs originated from medieval Europe. And Christians may not have actually been the ones to start the tradition of giving eggs. They're a symbol of fertility and rebirth in many cultures around the world. I can dig that. That makes sense. Yeah. And a lot of these things are all pagan anyway, aren't they, originally? It all, yeah, all interlinks religious stuff and pagan stuff all kind of mixes up, doesn't it, through a historical thing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, the Christians um, stole everything from the pagans, basically. So another reason I'm going to get slated. Yeah. Well, if you suddenly hear this cloud of 
cracking noise of thunder and lightning and Gemma just goes, Bzz, you'll know something's gone wrong. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, the next picture's dinner. Look. Oh, you shush. There's, there's a little bunny with an egg next to it. And I'm guessing that word, the goddess, is a story. A story. Well, we're going to go with a story. Right, so number seven. The holiday was named after the Ang- Anglo-Saxon goddess Estori. It was E-O-S-T-R-E. So hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, whatever. Um, <laughs> scholars believe that Easter was named after the, a festival celebrating Estori and the upcom- uh, and the coming of spring. Her sacred symbols are thought to have been the hare and the egg, which is why they prominent <laughs> feature. <laughs> they can't even spell feature. Who wrote this article? <laughs> I stumbled over the words and I'm glad that I did. It's F-E-T-A-U-R-E. Fetior. <laughs> Fetior. <laughs> Prominently in Easter symbolism too. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I really was going to skip that word and then I realised what the word was. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Come on, oh. good housekeeping, you're better than this. Well, so, apparently they're not. They're no better than the uh, the Metro at this stage. Yeah, I was going to say it's well, we're hitting that level. Which is worse, the Metro or Good Housekeeping, <laughs> and which has bigger circulation? So, eggs are dyed to represent the blood of Jesus Christ. This is a lot of very interesting colours. Then, if it's the if yeah. it's someone's blood, um, well, at least they might be one of the reasons, which stems from early Christians in Mesopotamia. There isn't a concrete reason behind the tradition. But that's one of the theories. They also look pretty, and kids might be more likely to eat a dyed, hard-boiled egg than a plain one. Yeah, I remember at school we had to do this thing where around Easter where we would people hard-boiled eggs and they had mm. to you know draw them and design them and things. But the last thing I'd want to do is eat a hard-boiled egg that had been sat up on a wall for weeks and weeks <laughs> and weeks. Yeah, it's a yeah. It's the the what the hundred year old egg, isn't it? Or the yeah. the Chinese tradition. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, they actually somebody actually brought, went to China at work, mm-hmm. and uh, they brought one of those back. And I was so tempted to sort of nab it so that me and you could eat it one day, but I was like, yeah. no, no, it's all right. I'm impressed they were allowed to bring it back. Actually, <laughs> I am too. I'm actually really surprised. I guess that our uh, security side of things is a little bit lax unless uh, you've got too much tobacco or you've got too much alcohol but there we have it <laughs> but yeah it does seem a bit weird that it's representing the colour of Jesus's blood because there's like a yellow one there there's a green one there there's a well he might be blue blooded you never know but there's Possibly. purple <laughs> there's a lot of different colours there guys <laughs> one of them sparkly <laughs> mm. It is a strange one. <laughs> uh, number nine. Good Friday is oh. recognised as a holiday in only 12 states. Mm. Right. And they've spelt recognised wrong, but they have spelt it right for them. So it's all good. They spell it the American way. Occurring, occurring two days before Easter Sunday, Good Friday commem- commemorates... Um, Jesus Christ's crucifixion, or zombie Christ, uh, or zombie Jesus, as I like to call him, but it isn't a federation, a federal holiday. Sorry, only certain states officially observe it, including New Jersey, North Carolina, and Tennessee, and the UK, motherfuckers. <laughs> we get Good Friday off, and we also get the Monday. I apologise to our American listeners for this blatant abuse towards you, but uh, tough. I'm not sorry. Yeah, I'm not no, sorry. I was tough. actually giving you the two Vs as well as I was sort of doing the na na na. Yeah, and uh, were the Vs at me or the Vs at our American listeners? Well, they, were, both. they were. They were everybody who doesn't there get Friday and the Monday yeah. off. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you permanently get Friday and Monday off. That's true, yeah. Suck it. (laughs) Yeah. So in that case, it wasn't for you, but you know. 
In 2020, 77% of American adults celebrated the holiday. About half of those chose to mark the occasion with a holiday meal, and the third decided to visit family and friends, virtually, according to the National Retail Federation. This year, many more people are probably putting on their Easter bonnets for IRL festivities. Okay, nice. Oh, in real life. I was thinking Ireland. Yes. Nope, IRL. <laughs> Yeah, but I was actually thinking that was like short for like Ireland rather than I was thinking, why is it Ireland festivities? Uh, cl- cl- clearly, Jim, you're not down with the kids because the not. kids will, instead of saying in real life, will actually yeah. say IRL. I know, I know. It's shocking. <laughs> it's just where my brain went, James. I'm ever so sorry. It's all right. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, yes, I'm glad that they did say virtually because imagine... Oh, there's a little child dressed in a bunny outfit. Uh. <laughs> that makes feel my... the joy, you listeners. Feel the joy. That makes my e- Easter eggs quiver. <laughs> <laughs> Crack on. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna scramble about for a bit. Yep. <laughs> Well, this isn't a sentence that we can normally say, but we can thank Germany for the bunny. Ooh. Bloody hell, you're getting xenophobic as well. Wow. <laughs> Anti-religious xenophobic, our days are numbered. <laughs> well, you know, I just I really want us to be big one year. So, you know, and I'm just thinking <laughs> that I need to attack the systems to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> The idea of the Easter Bunny delivering candy and eggs originated in Germany uh, during the Middle Ages, with the tradition written <coughs> men- with with the first written mention of this tradition dating back to the sixteenth century. Sixteenth century, uh, Dutch settlers in Pennsylvania brought the bunny to the United States in the seventeen hundreds. And the rest is delicious history. And I think they're talking about cooking and eating the bunny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the bunny knows what it's done. It deserves it. Mm. I wonder when it actually came over to us then. It, I assume it was around about the same time that Germany started. I would, You would think so. But unfortunately, this US-based Good Housekeeping article does not provide us with this information. No. I'm just gonna, I might just Google it quickly while you're reading the next one. Okay. So, unsurprisingly, because people do consume a lot of chocolate in these times, Easter and Halloween compete for the highest candy sales. The two holidays go head-to-head for the most candy sales every year. In fact, some years people buy more candy the week before Easter than the week before Halloween. But that's because Halloween purchases are more spread out over the month, leading up to the spooky night. Ooh. So when did Easter... Oh, when did Easter begin? <laughs> In the... UK, because otherwise, otherwise it'd be uh, AD, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um. Eighteen seventy-three. It seems mm. it happened over here in the UK. So nice. Uh. Oh, so that was after the United States. So we were a little yeah, bit slow off the um. Slow off the mark. Yeah. Sounds like my mum's getting a FaceTime call from somebody as well. So if anyone can hear that in the background, I'm ever so sorry. But uh, there we have it. She's obviously doing something different, having fun. <laughs> uh, okay, so have you ever had a peep, by the way? Or a no. pep? You? I, I think they're called peeps. Um, yes, I have. Somebody, one of my friends in America actually sent me over some. And they're basically just very sickly marshmallows. For us, you said they, they also look truly disgusting. They're not disgusting. They're not, but there's nothing really, you know, completely that unique about them, in my mm. opinion. They're kind of just like they're kind of like marshmallow with sugar on top, which it doesn't really need the added sugar because marshmallows enough as it is. But uh, yeah, yeah, they do sound pretty sweet. 
I'm quite impressed they didn't send you into a diabetic coma. No, well, this was pre-diabetes, so uh, maybe ah, that's right. what actually started my diabetes it off. It tipped you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Americans eat about 1.5 million peeps during Easter, which sounds wow. insane, but they are quite small. So maybe, maybe not quite as big, you know, not quite as uh, much as they sound. Uh, that makes these colourful marshmallows the most popular non-chocolate Easter candy. The Bethlehem... Pennsylvania factory makes an impressive 5.5 million a day. Try dipping yours in melted chocolate this year for an even tastier treat. Yes, mm. bring on that sugar rush, kids. Yes. You're all shaking, <laughs> driving your parents insane. <laughs> now, you might think, listening to us, that you have hit the tip of the iceberg when it comes to learning about this the humble peep or peeps but oh no i have more information for you because clearly good <laughs> housekeeping felt this was a real area of uh interest for people or alternatively they were looking at it going get near the midway point gotta pad this one out yeah so <laughs> basically like being on this podcast isn't it really James? absolutely in 1953 <laughs> in 19 all the way back in 1953 it took 27 hours to make one peep Bloody hell. Yeah, that's back when they were still new to the world and were made, uh, they were made using a handmade system with a pastry tube. But don't worry, it now takes just six minutes, six minutes, thanks to a unique machine called the Depositor, which sounds, which sounds kind of sick, yeah, scary and sick at the same time, that creates the unique and instantly recognisable shape of a really weird-looking bird. <laughs> Well, there we have it, folks. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll talk about something that happens in England, eh, guys? We'll <laughs> Since try. The majority of our listeners we'll are yeah. actually in England. <laughs> but it's all right, kids and guys and gals and everyone in between or whatever. We are providing you with a uh, bit of information. Yeah, we're, we're going global this week, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry that neither of us called you salty tadpoles. That was really rude of us. Okay, so ah. now we're on to one of my favourites, the Cadbury uh, crab crabberry. The, the crab the crabberries. The crabberries, yes. Uh, crab the knockoff there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I can't say it properly. Cadbury cream egg. Mm, yummy, 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 yummy. Still haven't found the the one that is white and brown because this year it's white and brown. So, uh, you know, although next year it will come out that they're going to do a white and brown one because this year they came out with the white one, didn't they? Which was the one you were supposed to be looking for to get the 10 grand or whatever it is. So it's all a marketing scheme, everybody. It is, but, you know, I still want to find it. And also it means I get some yummy, yummy chocolate. Again, I've not got the chocolate allergy anymore, guys, so it's all good. And I am still diabetic, but for, uh, whatever. Anyway, one more than 1.5 million Cadbury cream eggs are made every day. And I have most of them. <laughs> it's true, you should see a house. It's just like stacks upon stacks upon stacks. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. They'll be coming round for a, for a cream egg. Um, even more impressive is that the Bonville factory in Birmingham, England, we've got to our side of the, the, uh, the world now, churns out... It only took 15 articles. <laughs> no, exactly. Churns out 500 million of the cream-filled eggs every year. If you piled all of those eggs on top of each other, they'd create a tower that is taller than Mount Everest. Talk about an epic Easter egg hunt. I mean, that is wow. pretty the, interesting, though, isn't it? That they would actually be taller than Mount Everest. It is. That explains why you're having roofing work done. The number <laughs> of eggs have clearly slammed into the, the roof of the house. Makes yeah. sense. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's absolutely it. Oh, God, we're back to the Americans again. 
Yeah. <laughs> we do like Americans, by the way. So any of our salted tadpoles that are American, we're only teasing, yeah. <laughs> now, this is a, a sweet or candies, the Americans would say, that I really like. Americans consume over 16 million jelly beans during Easter. Mm-hmm. That's enough jelly beans to circle a globe. Not once, not once, not even twice, Gemma, but three times. Wow. Or to fill a plastic egg the size of a nine-storey building. These were first introduced as an Easter treat in the 1930s, and we can't imagine this day without them. I can, but, you know, I'm clearly not an American. <laughs> I I just can't get my head around, hold on two seconds, that the the jelly beans to circle the globe, uh, you yes. know, the, the however many it was, 16 million, which is written in front of me because I'm reading the same thing as you. But uh, mm-hmm. so it could go around the globe three times. So, you know, mm-hmm. obviously the earth is massively huge mm-hmm. or it could fill a plastic egg the size of a nine story building. That just doesn't commute to me. It compute to me that um, me, the, the information doesn't commute to your brain. It doesn't commute in compute in your brain either. No, I'm so not. You, you I, got me bug. You got me buggering up the terminology then. <laughs> well, to be fair, I wasn't 100 percent sure which I'd got if I'd got it right or not. But I went with both. But um, yeah. So, but you know, a nine story building. Surely that's not as big as the world it's possible that it would work because if you think how compact everything would be in the building mm. if you're just putting them on a line around each other uh i suppose yeah okay I think, yeah i think it's possible all right okay i can kind of see it now i can kind of see it now have you ever had those mm-hmm. jelly babies that are actually the not jelly babies jelly beans mm-hmm. that are the evil ones the ones that no. Are uh, like punishment ones. No, and no. I'm not oh. going to do either. <laughs> Someone got them for me once. And, oh mm. my god! Like, <laughs> it was. I didn't even open them, but the whole the whole packet just smelled like cheesy feet. It was. Oh, it was rank. And I, yeah, they'd wrapped it up with. Um, it was like a birthday or Christmas present or whatever, just as like a joke. But they'd wrapped it up with this other thing, and the other thing stank of these um, evil jelly baby uh, jelly beans. Sorry, I keep saying jelly babies, but um, yeah. Oh god. It was. Oh. They were like, oh, do you want to eat one? I was like, no, I do not want to eat one. It was like bogey flavour and earwax flavour and cheesy like feet. Ones, and, oh, don't they? Yeah. and vomit, yeah. And I think vomit mm. was the one that was the one that was causing all the stinky awfulness there. But <laughs> oh. oh Yeah, so just think these are what your friends get you. What do your enemies get well, you? We're not friends anymore, so there we have it. <laughs> ah, fair enough. Maybe it was a maybe there was a hidden message in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> now here's one I can relate to very much. So, so around ninety million chocolate bunnies are sold for Easter. Oh, am I not reading yeah. it then? Okay, you carry on then. <laughs> oh, sorry, I jumped. Uh, no, no, I'll hand it over to you. Sorry, I was just so excited seeing the bunny. No, if if you're that excited, please continue. Yes. It's not I'm excited by the next one as well. But <laughs> okay. So, considering $2.6 billion is spent on candy alone during this religious and secular spring celebration, it makes sense. Oh, and that's only in the United States. We bet most of those people have opinions on whether... To devour their tails or ears first. Mm. What do you think, James? If you had an Easter bunny, a chocolate Easter bunny, not one of the ones in the garden, um, no. what would, what you would eat? I do? What do you eat first? Uh, do you eat their bums it, or do you eat their tails? Ears first. Um, ears. Ears first. Yeah, and I tend I to go smash ears. them against the surface to break them so I can eat more of them. <laughs> You're so brutal. <laughs> yes. They, well, they know what they've done. I did actually have it somewhere. I'm not sure where, but I'll I'll try and find it at some point. But um, I did have a coaster that had uh, two chocolate bunnies on it, and one <laughs> <laughs> one had no ears, and it was like you know the other one um, had no bum, and mm-hmm. you know they oh, I can't remember exactly what it said actually. Let me uh, do you know what? Let let's just take that out. But it it was anyway. It was quite a funny. Um, it was quite a funny thing, but. Uh, Anyway, sorry. I'll take that bit out. (laughs) I'll send you a picture so you can see what I'm talking about in a minute. (laughs) Okay. Right. So do you want me to take 18 or do you want to do that one as well? No, no. No, I'll let you take 18. Okay, so it's the same sort of thing again. Um, 
a surprise a surprisingly 59% of people eat the ears first so that's mm. about right for us isn't it because we both said we'd eat the ears first yep. and, and you then said oh, said that you'd smash it <laughs> yes he knows what it's done it deserves this violence from me yeah I think it's because it's the first thing, isn't it? It's the first thing that you see, isn't it, on the ears? Uh, oh, the ears, sorry. Yes. Only a handful start with the feet or the tail, and the rest apparently don't have a plan of action. If that's you, consider this your inspiration to give a little thought before cracking into yours or the kids. Or the kids' chocolate, I think we're talking yes. about. Not, to not, eat the not, children. not murdering a child and eating it for sustenance. No. <laughs> and also, if you just get those little ones, you know, you get those little ones that are kind of like, and some of them are like chocolate orange or whatever, I just put the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> wow. I thought you meant a whole chocolate orange for a minute. Oh, no. You turned into <laughs> a snake not... or something. <laughs> My mouth's not quite that big. <laughs> like a snake not quite. just, just, just un, un, hinging the jaw. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I meant the I meant the chocolate bunnies. You know, you get those ah. little ones, those little mini ones. Yeah, I'd probably bite the head off first though with those. Really, not put it really no. in the hole of my mouth. No, I believe you. Thousands <laughs> wouldn't, but I believe you. <laughs> Now, as we stressed earlier, this is an American article, so the mm-hmm. White House Easter egg roll tradition started in 1878. Ooh. It is said that President, Ru- Pr- the President Rutherford B. Hayes was taking a walk when children approached him asking about a possible Easter egg roll. He loved the idea and it's been one of the cutest annual White House events ever since. So what, do they just roll eggs? Well, the... From what I now, on the way they do it now, I think they have somebody dressed up as the Easter Bunny and they do like an egg roll and it's all that kind of thing. And they okay, probably so, feed the kids chocolate. Okay, so they're at the top of the hill and they roll the egg down the hill, I'm assuming. Yes. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. I was trying to, I was trying to again, try and get my, my head around that really. But um, yes. Well, I mean, that does sound like fun. And also the kids are getting the um, exercise before they have all their sugar, aren't they? So that's good. Yes. yes. And finally, number 20. Mm. <laughs> Can I give you a chocolate pretzel? <laughs> Come on, James. Maybe if you're really nice. <laughs> Come on, give me a laugh. <laughs> Would you, you like a chocolate me. pretzel? <laughs> James, for Christ's sake, laugh. It's funny. I want you to read the article. No, I want you to laugh at the fact that, do you want a chocolate pretzel? I'm quite a Stealing from rats. Kevin Smith. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Not stealing, quoting <laughs> and admiring. I'll have you know. Anyway, so number 20. In the old days, pretzels were associated with Christmas. With Christmas? Christmas? <laughs> yes. A brain's broken, people. We've done it. It's only taken 20 good housekeeping articles. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and it's not articles. It's only one <laughs> article, just so you know. But anyway. Um, well, anyway, Easter. So this episode has been longer than we thought it was going to be. So it's now Christmas, everyone. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, would you like a chocolate <laughs> chocolate covered pretzel, James? <laughs> ah, fuck it, just give me one. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Why? Because the twists of the salty treat resemble arms crossing in prayer. Meh, sort of. Um, Ish. We, yeah, ish. We say it's time to bring back this savoury snack to the sweets-filled holiday because life is all about balance. But also, can I just point out to the good housekeeping for those that were actually referencing religion? Actually, if it's any, if everybody is about religion, it's not about the chocolates. It's not about the pretzels. It's not about the Easter bunny. It's about zombie Jesus, innit? <laughs> <laughs> Again, if any if any people of faith are listening to this, I apologise. Uh, but I also would like to say, bring back the pretzels because I love pretzels. What chocolate covered ones? Well, they're pretty good, you know, as long as they're not <laughs> shit covered like in the film. 
<laughs> no, no. To be fair, I I I like a pretzel as well. Yeah. So yeah, they are quite pretzels. nice. They are quite tasty. So so there we have it, folks. That is the end of the article. So I hope that we've brought you some Easter cheer, and uh, you know, we'll be back next week. It'll be me and Andy next week, and then the following week it will be me and James again with another interesting episode for you. Mm. Um, this one's been educational as well. Yes, it has. We've learned a lot about American traditions. <laughs> We've also learned how to write an article. Without spelling checks done, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And we've also learned that Gemma can read said spelling mistakes and uh, <laughs> not realise that she's actually reading it the right word. <laughs> well, I like the fact that when there's the spelling mistake, you actually correct it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apart from that other one, um, you know, a bit later on, but I can't remember what it was now. So there we have it. <laughs> well... I don't know about you, James, but I think we've been talking enough Easter uh, codswallop. I couldn't think what the word was then. <laughs> Easter codswallop this week. I have been Gemma. I have been James. I've had really enjoyed this extravagant Aww. episode. Oh, all the puns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm really frying under this light. <laughs> Nah, that wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too bad. You know, it, it didn't scramble my brain too much. <laughs> well, you be careful because otherwise I'll beat it. <laughs> beat it. <laughs> I whisk it into an omelet. <laughs> Come on, let's hop on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm actually I'm gonna stop with the puns now. I'm gonna go. <laughs> All right. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.